So about a week ago, at the time of filming of this video, I did a 12 hour Calculus 2 live stream where we covered almost everything that's presented in a normal Calculus 2 type class. And thinking about that made me want to think of an integral that would maybe be at the upper end of difficulty for a class like that. And that's what we've got today. But maybe before we jump into the problem, I'm thinking that I could maybe do another one of those live streams around December or early January. Personally, I think linear algebra would be really fun, but post in the comments if you have other ideas. You know, I think maybe abstract algebra would be nice as well, but you know, I'd like to hear from everyone else. Okay, so our goal is to evaluate the integral from zero to one of one over the square root of one plus x plus the square root of one minus x. Okay, looking at this, we see that we have a sum of radical expressions in the denominator. So that really just screams out for us to rationalize the denominator. And so we can do that by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the radical conjugate of this thing. So let's recall that in this case, that is the square root of one plus x minus the square root of one minus x. So we're gonna hit the numerator and the denominator with that. Okay, so let's see what that leads us with. Now we'll have the integral from zero to one of, well, the numerator will now be the square root of one plus x minus the square root of one minus x dx. And let's see about the denominator. Well, we've got an a plus b times a minus b type situation, which means that's gonna square out to a squared minus b squared or this squared minus this squared. But that's just gonna get rid of the square roots, leaving us with one plus x minus one minus x. In other words, we'll have two x. I'm gonna bring the half out front and then leave us with x in the denominator. But now looking at this, it seems like we might wanna split this up into two integrals. So in other words, half times the integral from zero to one of the square root of one plus x over x dx minus half times the integral from zero to one of the square root of one minus x over x dx. But unfortunately, those things do not converge. And you can kind of see that happening because as x goes to zero, well, you've got this discontinuity in the denominator, but the numerator is not equal to zero. So you've got something like one over zero. But splitting these up and evaluating them as definite integrals is a little bit problematic because of this discontinuity at zero. Notice we've got an x in the denominator. And looked at separately, the numerator here is not zero at zero, and neither is it over here. But in the original combination of these two, everything seems to look a little bit nicer at zero. We still have a discontinuity, but the numerator is at least accounting for that discontinuity. So while we don't wanna split them up into two definite integrals like this, we still will. You wanna say hi? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> but we still will use the sum rule for the antiderivatives, just not the definite integrals. So in other words, we will view this as one half times the integral from zero to one of the square root of one plus x over x minus the square root of one minus x over x, and then dx that whole thing. So we're gonna need to find the antiderivative of each of these separately and then simplify their difference and then evaluate from zero to one. And we'll see that everything will work out there. And before we dive into that, I wanna notice that these two antiderivatives will be related. In fact, they're both from the same family of the form one plus ax over x dx, where that numerator is in a square root. Notice this first one is a equals one, and the second one is a equals minus one. So those are the two that we'll look for. Okay, so let's maybe calculate this on the side and we'll jump back to our main question. So we started working on our goal integral, and we came up with this side project of finding the antiderivative of the square root of one plus ax over x. So that's exactly what we're gonna do here. 
We're gonna do this with just standard u substitution. So let's say u is the numerator. That's gonna be the square root of one plus ax. And now let's solve this for x. This is sometimes called rationalizing substitution actually. So here we'll have u squared minus one is equal to ax. So that's a pretty straightforward calculation, which means x is equal to one over a times u squared minus one. But now we can calculate dx as two over a times u du. Okay, great. So that means we'll take this value for x and we'll plug it up here. And then we'll take this value right here for dx, plug it in there, and then keep in mind that this u can be plugged straight into the numerator. So let's see what that'll leave us with. So notice we'll have this u in the numerator, another u in the numer numerator from this. So we'll have u squared over, well notice I'll get a u squared minus one from this. I'll get an a in the denominator from the dx, but that's gonna be canceled out from this one over a, which is in the denominator from the x. And then furthermore, we have a two, which is in the numerator. So we've got some sort of situation like this. Okay, so now next up, I wanna notice that I can rewrite this two u squared in the numerator as the following. So it's gonna be two times u squared minus one plus two. And so that's just kind of saving us from doing polynomial long division, which you would do if it were a little bit more complicated. All right, so that's gonna leave us with, let's see, two plus two over u squared minus one du. So notice the two came from canceling this u squared minus one with that u squared minus one. Now we probably want to do partial fraction decomposition on this guy right here. And maybe since I've done a ton of videos where we look at partial fraction decomposition, I'll just skip the calculation. And this is one over u minus one plus one over u plus one. So if you were to give those a common denominator and then smash them back together, you would get this term right here. So that leaves us with the final u antiderivative of two plus one over u minus one minus one over u plus one du. And then that can be written as two u plus the natural log of u minus one minus the natural log of u plus one. Okay. But then we can finally start putting this together. Notice this is going to be two times u, but u was this guy right here, the square root of one plus ax. And then we have plus the natural log of the absolute value of this u minus one divided by u plus one using logarithm rules there. So that's gonna be the square root of one plus ax minus one over the square root of one plus ax plus one. And then plus a c, but since our final goal is a definite integral, I'm not gonna worry about that. Okay, so I'm gonna get that formula over here. And now we can apply this formula to our problem, which I've brought back to the top of the board. So notice this first function can be have its antiderivative calculated with a equals one, and then the second one with a equals minus one. And so that's pretty nice. Notice the a only lives inside of the radical. It doesn't come out as a multiplier or anything, so this should be pretty easy. So now we've got one half times the quantity, two times the square root of one plus x, minus two times the square root of one minus x. So that's from this first bit right here. And then next we'll have plus the natural log of the absolute value of the square root of one plus x minus one over the square root of one plus x plus one. So that's from this guy being applied to this a equals one. And then minus the natural log of the square root of one minus x minus one the square root of one minus x plus one. That's from applying that with a equals minus one. Now we wanna take all of this and evaluate it at x equals zero and x equals one. 
but maybe there's some simplification that we can do before we get to that point. But now we can start putting this together. So I'll maybe move this half inside, and so that'll cancel out the two. So we'll have the square root of x plus one minus the square root of x minus one, and then plus one half times the natural log of a bunch of stuff. Because now I'm gonna combine these. Notice we've got a subtraction between them, which really means we're dividing this by this. But since those are quite complicated, I'll just multiply by the reciprocal. So I'll have the square root of one plus x minus one, square root of one plus x plus one, that'll be my first term. And then we need to multiply that by the square root of one minus x plus one one over the square root of one minus x minus one. <clears throat> okay, great. So notice we took the reciprocal of this second one. And then finally, we need to evaluate this from x equals zero to x equals one. Okay, so let's see what we get. Plugging in x equals one here will give us the square root of two minus zero, okay, plus one half times the natural log of, well, let's see what we get when we plug in x equals one to all of these parts. So this is gonna give us the square root of two minus one over the square root of two plus one. And then this guy right here is gonna give us one over minus one, but since that's in the absolute value, we can just forget about that. Now we need to subtract off what we get when we plug in x equals zero. So notice here we'll have root one minus root one, that's obviously zero. And now here we'll have the one half times the natural log of, well, it's gonna be a bunch of stuff again. Here we'll have one minus one, that's zero. Here we'll have one minus one there, which is also zero. So plugging in zero will give us a zero in the numerator of the natural log from this term and a zero in the denominator of the natural log of this term. And that seems somewhat problematic, but you can do some sort of rationalization of the numerator with respect to this term and the denominator with respect to that term to get rid of that badness and then evaluate it. And so the proper way to do that is to maybe get rid of this bit right here and then replace it with a limit. So now we've got the limit as x goes to zero from above of the natural log of all of this heinous stuff right here. So let's see, we've got the square root of one plus x minus one times the square root of one minus x plus one all over the square root of one plus x plus one times the square root of one minus x minus one. Okay, so let's bring this line to the top and then we're about ready to finish it off. After a bunch of work, we got our goal integral down to this following combination of numbers and this limit. Then on the last board, we noticed some badness in part of this limit. So notice that this term is okay, because if x goes to zero, we have root one plus one, that's just two, that's fine. Then if x goes to zero up here, this term is also okay, because we have root one plus one, which is two again. So like I just said, this guy right here is okay, and this guy right here is okay. But this guy right here, this guy right here, which are underlined in red, are not okay. But we can use a logarithm rule to separate the okay stuff from the not okay stuff. So let's do that. So bringing this down, we have the square root of two plus half natural log root two minus one root two plus one. And then minus half, we have this limit as x goes to zero from above of, well, let's do the good stuff first. So that's gonna be the natural log of, I don't really need the absolute value anymore, so I'll leave it. So the square root of one minus x plus one over the square root of one plus x plus one. <clears throat> 
So like I said, that comes from the orange and we took that out because it was okay. And now we have that added to the natural log of the square root of one plus X minus one over the square root of one minus X minus one. And that part is not so good because the numerator and the denominator inside that natural log go to zero. But now let's look closely at what's happening. As x goes to zero, we have two over two inside of this natural log. That gives us the natural log of one, which is zero. So this is approaching zero. And so now all that's left is to deal with the limit associated with this part. So let's bring that over here. <clears throat> the limit as x goes to zero from above, and instead of looking at the natural log of that stuff, let's just look at the interior. If we can get a handle on what's going on in the interior of that natural log, since natural log is continuous, we're essentially good to go. So let's see, that's gonna be the square root of one plus x minus one over the square root of one minus x minus one. So now we're in a L'Hopital situation. If we evaluate the numerator, we get zero. The denominator, we get zero. This is type zero over zero, which means we can do a direct application of L'Hopital's rule. Well, let's see what that'll give us. That'll give us this limit as x goes to zero from above of, we need to take the square root of this. Keep in mind that this is like one plus x to the half. So that's gonna give us one half times one over the square root of one plus x. And then the derivative of negative one is zero. So that's good, that's gone. Now all of this is over. Well, we need to take the derivative of this as well, but that's gonna be essentially the same thing. We'll get minus half one over the square root of one minus x. And then the derivative of the minus one goes away as well. But now all of the badness is gone. If we evaluate this at zero, we get half over minus half or minus one. But remember, this is all occurring in some absolute values, which I didn't bring down from the last step, which means we have the natural log of minus one, which is also equal to zero. So that means all of that trends off towards zero as well. So in the end, we have our final value of our integral will be this number right here. And that's a good place to stop.